Okay, next, let's look at the practices in environmental sustainability. Practices that contribute towards environmental sustainability are intended to ensure sufficient availability of natural resources to benefit all current and future life forms on Earth. In sustaining the environment, steps must be taken to prevent environmental pollution, to protect the capacity of ecosystem, and avoid development that will endanger the health of human beings or affect their quality of life. Therefore, all parties are responsible in sustaining the environment. Okay, next is uh, figure 10.9 to show the various ways and activities on how everyone can help in sustaining the environment. Okay, let's look at the bio exploration right here. The National Cleanliness Policy is an initiative by the Malaysian government to become a cleaner country and create a society that practices good hygiene and cleanliness in the culture. Okay, so these are the practices that contribute towards environmental sustainability. First one is on the environment friendly transport. Okay, use environment friendly transport such as bicycles or hybrid or electrical electric vehicles. Okay, number two is to practice car pooling and berkongsi kereta. And the third one is to use public transport like the buses, commuters, monorails, light railway transit, A to LRT, electric train service, and KLIA Express ataupun KLIA Transit. Okay, tapi yang tertera di sini itu, uh, it is only available at the uh, uh, kawasan bandar yang lebih maju lah seperti KL. So for us, in small town, okay, might be kapuling dan juga public transport yang kita rujuk uh, itu adalah bus lah. Okay. The second practice is energy saving. Okay, the main source of electric energy comes from burning of non-renewable substances like the fossil fuels, okay, such as petrol and the diesel. Okay, so use electricity wisely is very important to reduce the release of pollutant substances like carbon monoxide. Okay, so the easiest and simplest thing that we can do is to turn off electrical switches when not in use. Okay, next one is the concept of 5R. Okay, last time we have 3R, but nowadays there's additional of 2 more R. Okay, the disposal of waste materials can be reduced when we practice 5R. Okay, so what are the 5Rs? Last time, 3R itu adalah reuse, reduce, and also recycle. But now, another 2R here, kita ada rethink, and also work of repairing that can be done lah. So, ini dia konsep 5R. Okay, next one is the use of alternative renewable energy. Okay, renewable energy means energy that is generated from natural resources, such as sun, wind, waves, water, geothermal, and also biomass. Okay, yaitu tenaga yang boleh dikitar semula, yang boleh diperbaharui. So, renewable energy ini, it is cleaner, it is easier, and safer. So, this is one of the alternative. Next is on management of domestic and toxic waste. So, the Department of Environment has given the authority to first to coordinate the waste disposal activities. Okay, number two is to set the limit, maximum limit of waste production. And that number three is to control the licenses for categories, content, quantity, and risk of waste products. Okay, another Another effort that can be done under this practice is that upcycling of waste substances, okay, which can 
in uh, turn reduce the waste to be taken to landfill sites. Okay, jadi apa maksud upcycling? Okay, it is turning old substances into new, beautiful, creative things. Dan yang paling penting adalah aktiviti ini boleh mengurangkan waste disposal. Okay, moving on adalah biological control. Okay, which is a way to control the population pests using their natural enemies. And this is very important to reduce the usage of pesticides. Okay, contohnya, owl ataupun burung hantu ini as a biological control agent ataupun dia sebagai predator in the oil palm plantations, predator kepada prey rats ini. Uh, therefore, we don't have to use pesticides ataupun dia punya penggunaan itu akan dapat dikawal ataupun dikurangkan. Okay, next one is on water saving where we can make use of the rain water okay, by collecting rain water or, to re the, or reuse water to water plants and also to washed vehicles. Uh, ini antara um, practices that I think is common to to all even uh, in the household we ourselves practice this kind of uh, water saving effort practices okay let's look at innovation in Malaysia the National Water Services Commission ataupun Suruhan Jaya Perkhidmatan Air Negara SPAN has introduced water efficient products uh, water efficient products through water efficient product labeling scheme for efficiency water efficiency products such as water pipes toilet equipments urinals showers and washing machines so this effort is to reduce the rate of water consumption per individual maksudnya barangan-barangan ini water ef sekarang ini adalah jenis yang jimat air Okay, next one is the issue of the status of food security in Malaysia. Okay, first we define what is food security. It is defined as having an assurance on the availability of food as well as sufficient access to food and safe food utilization. Okay, tiga aspek ini. So, there are actually four components of food security. Okay, itu the first one, availability of food. So, there is sufficient supply of high quality food in the local market as well as for imported food. Okay, komponen kedua adalah access to food where food can be obtained easily in order to meet the nutritional needs of diet. Okay, the third component, food utilization. The ability of an individual to get enough nutrients by consuming food and drinking clean water as well as good practices in food processing and preparation. And the last component, component keempat adalah food stability where each individual has access to get enough nutritious food at all times. Okay, let's look at the history corner right here. The National Agro-Food Policy, NAP, 2012 is actually an effort by the government to in to uh, in order to successfully accomplish food security yang kita bincangkan sekarang ini. Okay, halal. Okay, halal is an important element in determining the status of food security. Halal food must be manufactured in clean surroundings using methods which emphasizes on hygiene and orderliness during the production process. Halal means and inclusive in all aspects. Okay, daripada bermulanya at the farm to the final food product. So, other than that, other guidelines which are used, which are implemented in order to determine food security adalah Good Manufacturing Practices, GMP, Dan yang satu lagi adalah Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points, HACCP. Just like the halal factor, 
the two guidelines here also emphasizes the quality of processes okay, that are hygienic, that are healthy, and that are safe during food preparation. Okay, sekali lagi ada history corner di sini. Uh, even before the Independence Day, the National Food Security Policy had been an implemented in Malaysia through the National Rice and Paddy Policy. However, this policy at that time only emphasizes on the production of rice. But after the world's food crisis in 2008, the government drafted the Dasar Jaminan Bekalan Makanan Negara, which the, this pro policy provides a guarantee on sufficient food security for population uh, di negara kita, okay, populasi penduduk di Malaysia.